The Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, often simply referred to as the Hells Angels, is an iconic name that instantly evokes a mix of intrigue, respect, and apprehension. Established in 1948, this motorcycle club has grown to be a global phenomenon, with chapters spread across continents. As with any entity shrouded in mystery and colored by media portrayals, the club has earned its notoriety, with tales of outlaw activities and countercultural stances. This video delves into a lesser discussed yet deeply intriguing facet of their culture, their purported rules surrounding sexuality and relationships. Join us as we navigate this controversial terrain. Number 1. History and Foundation of Hell's Angels The origin of the Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club is a reflection of post-war America's landscape, an era marked by the return of battle-hardened soldiers to a rapidly changing society. Born from the disquiet and displacement of World War II veterans, the Hells Angels found their beginnings in Fontana, California, in 1948. The club's roots trace back to various motorcycle groups, including the pissed-off Bastards of Bloomington, from which the original members defected to form the now-legendary Hells Angels. Contrary to popular belief, the club's intriguing name wasn't inspired by any dark or hellish folklore. Instead, it is said to be a nod to various fighter squadrons from both world wars, especially those with names like Hell's Angels and Hell's Birds. The unique spelling dropping the apostrophe became a defining trait, distinguishing the motorcycle club from any military reference. In its nascent stages, the Hell's Angels was more of a band of brothers than an organized entity, united by a shared love for motorcycles, the thrill of the open road, and a mutual sense of detachment from conventional society. Their early days were marked by rides, camaraderie, and the occasional brush with law enforcement over minor disputes or brawls. Yet, it wasn't long before media attention began to spotlight the club, often highlighting their rebellious nature and framing them as outlaws. One cannot discuss the Hell's Angels' rise to prominence without mentioning the 1965 article by Hunter S. Thompson titled, Motorcycle Gangs, Losers, and Outsiders. Thompson's expose painted the club as a menacing group, a portrayal further cemented by his 1966 book, Hell's Angels, The Strange and Terrible Saga of the Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs. While the work was journalistic in nature, its dramatic depiction played a role in shaping public perception, branding the Hell's Angels as dangerous renegades. As the 1960s progressed, the Hell's Angels found themselves intricately tied to the counterculture movement. Their presence at the infamous Altamont Free Concert in 1969, where they were hired as security, led to a tragic incident that left a man dead, further complicating their public image. This event became symbolic of the end of the peace and love era and the beginning of a more turbulent decade. Through the years, the Hells Angels expanded not just in numbers, but also in global presence. From Canada to Europe and Australia, chapters began springing up, each adopting the club's ethos while blending in local cultural nuances. As with any group that grows in size and influence, the club faced internal rifts, external challenges, and increasing attention from law enforcement. Number two, the outlaw biker image. The image of the outlaw biker is as much a product of reality as it is of fiction. From the sun-beaten highways of America to the silver screen, the portrayal of leather-clad, bearded men riding roaring motorcycles has become synonymous with a certain brand of rebellion. To understand the outlaw image, one must delve into the socio-political landscape from which it emerged and its subsequent evolution. The 1950s were a time of significant transformation in America. The post-war economic boom brought prosperity, but also introduced a palpable sense of homogeneity and societal conformity. In this setting, bikers with their audacious lifestyles and overt rejection of societal norms presented a stark contrast. However, it was a single event in 1947, years before the Hells Angels were founded, that sowed the seeds for the outlaw image, the Hollister Riot. Held in the small Californian town of Hollister, a motorcycle rally turned chaotic as bikers flooded the streets, leading to clashes with law enforcement. Though the disruption was relatively minor, it caught the eye of national media. Life magazine ran a feature with a now iconic image of a seemingly drunken biker amidst a sea of beer bottles. 
The incident, though blown out of proportion, portrayed motorcycle clubs as symbols of unrestrained freedom and, to many, chaos. The Hollister event, while not directly involving the Hell's Angels, paved the way for the outlaw archetype, which the club would eventually come to embody. The burgeoning film industry further embellished this image. Films like The Wild One, starring Marlon Brando, showcased bikers as the New Age rebels, adding layers of drama, aggression, and romanticism to the archetype. The Hells Angels, with their distinctive patches, charismatic members, and often defiant stance towards authority, fit the outlaw mold almost too perfectly. As their reputation grew, so did the tales of their exploits, blurring the lines between fact and fabrication. Encounters with law enforcement, tales of territorial disputes, and alleged criminal enterprises further entrenched their outlaw status. The outlaw biker image is a tapestry woven from threads of truth, media sensationalism, film industry glamorization, and the biker's own embrace of the rebel ethos. For the Hells Angels, this image has been both a badge of honor and a cross to bear, influencing perceptions, interactions, and the very essence of their legacy. As we explore deeper facets of their culture, it's crucial to remember that the Hells Angels, like any group, cannot be reduced to mere stereotypes, and their story is far more nuanced than the outlaw label might suggest. Number three, women's role in motorcycle clubs. The world of motorcycle clubs, with its unwritten codes and deeply rooted traditions, often evokes an image of rugged masculinity. This perception, however, only scratches the surface of the intricate and multifaceted dynamics within these communities. While men may dominate the limelight, women have always played pivotal roles, their presence both revered and, at times, contentious. Historically, women affiliated with motorcycle clubs were commonly referred to as old ladies, a term of endearment and respect, signifying their status as the primary female partner of a club member. Being an old lady meant sharing in the club's lifestyle, its highs and lows, and enjoying a place of honor within the club's familial structure. These women were not mere bystanders. They often participated in rides, events, and even club decisions, albeit informally. However, the title of an old lady also bore the weight of certain expectations. Loyalty to the club, and more significantly to her partner, was paramount. In many clubs, Women didn't wear the club's official colors or patches, but they might don badges that signified their association, often denoting them as property of a particular member. This concept of property has been contentious, with some perceiving it as a sign of possession or control, while others within the club culture see it as a badge of belonging and protection. Parallel to the old ladies, there have been instances of women who maintained a more casual association with the club, often termed sweet butts or mamas. Their relationships with club members were less formal, sometimes fleeting, and they didn't possess the same status as an old lady. Their role was more fluid, often influenced by personal relationships and the particular dynamics of individual chapters. As with any subculture, the experience of women in the MC world varies widely, influenced by geography, club specifics, and individual personalities. However, it's undeniable that their roles, whether as old ladies, casual associates, or members of all female clubs, have significantly shaped the landscape of motorcycle club culture. Their stories, though less often told, offer a unique lens into the heart of a world that, for all its rough exterior, is deeply rooted in bonds of love, loyalty, and shared passion. Number four, old lady, the role of the main woman. Within the intricate tapestry of motorcycle club culture, certain terms and titles carry weighty implications, none more so than the revered designation of an old lady. At a cursory glance, the term might seem antiquated, even derogatory, but in the lexicon of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, HAMC, and similar organizations, being an old lady is a role steeped in respect, responsibility, and a deep sense of belonging. One of the most emblematic symbols of an old lady's role is her vest or patches. While she doesn't don the club's official colors or main patch, she might wear badges that signify her association. Among the most debated of these symbols is the property of patch. To outsiders, this patch can seem possessive, even misogynistic. However, within the club, it's often viewed differently. 
While the notion of being property might seem antithetical to modern ideals of partnership, in the context of the HAMC, it signifies protection, commitment, and a deep bond with a member. The world of an old lady is not without its challenges. The very nature of motorcycle club culture, with its frequent rides, late-night meetings, and brushes with the law, means that she often has to stand strong, managing home and hearth, and sometimes facing societal judgment. Yet many old ladies embrace their roles with pride. For them, the sense of community, the bonds forged with other women in similar roles, and the passionate commitment to their partners make the challenges worthwhile. The term old lady in the context of the HAMC is a testament to the rich, multifaceted culture of motorcycle clubs. It's a title that encapsulates the complexities of love, loyalty, and sacrifice. For the women who wear this designation proudly, it's not just about being the partner of a club member, it's about being a pillar of strength, support, and unwavering commitment in a world that thrives on brotherhood and honor. Number 5. Property Patches In the world of motorcycle clubs, patches are more than mere pieces of embroidered fabric. They are symbols, declarations, and narratives. Each patch tells a story, representing a chapter of history, a badge of honor, or a rite of passage. Among the myriad patches worn within the biker community, few are as contentious and debated as the property of patches often adorned by women associated with the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, HAMC members. The property of patch, typically worn on the front of a vest or jacket, explicitly names a club member to whom a woman is closely associated. The patch reads, property of, followed by the member's name or nickname. This patch signifies that the woman is the primary female partner or old lady of that particular member. On the surface, the notion of any human being labeled as property can be unsettling, clashing starkly with contemporary views on individual rights and agency. However, to understand the real implications of this patch, one needs to delve deeper into the culture and ethos of the HAMC. Firstly, the property of Patch serves as a signal to other club members and the larger biker community. It communicates that the woman has a protector within the club, a member who is responsible for her safety and well-being. Any disrespect or harm directed towards her would be taken as an affront to the named member and, by extension, the club. The Patch is a deterrent, signaling that the woman is not to be harassed or mistreated. For many women who wear the patch, it's a symbol of commitment and belonging. They view it not as a sign of subjugation, but of pride. It's a testament to their relationship, their trust in their partner, and their embrace of the biker lifestyle. It signifies that they have someone who would go to great lengths to ensure their safety and happiness. In the end, the property of Patch with its layers of tradition, symbolism, and debate, encapsulates the complexities of the HAMC's relationship with gender roles and societal norms. It's a testament to the evolving nature of club culture, the ongoing dialogue between tradition and modernity, and the deeply personal choices individuals make in the context of a larger collective identity. Number 6. The Rules of Engagement In a club as storied and tight-knit as the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, HAMC, Rules and traditions play a pivotal role in maintaining cohesion and ensuring the smooth functioning of the collective. While many of these rules pertain to the club's operations, riding protocols, and member behaviors, there are also unwritten guidelines that dictate the dynamics of relationships and intimacy within the club. These rules serve not just to uphold the club's reputation, but also to safeguard its members and their loved ones. At the core of these rules is the concept of respect. The HAMC places a high premium on loyalty and honor, and this extends to personal relationships. An old lady, the primary female partner of a club member, is accorded a special status within the club's echelons. She is seen as an extension of the member, and any affront to her is considered a direct challenge to him and, by extension, the club. As such, relationships with an old lady even casual interactions, are approached with caution and respect. It's also noteworthy to mention that personal disputes related to relationships, while handled within the club, are kept separate from club business. The HAMC's primary focus remains on brotherhood, riding, and club operations. Personal vendettas or disputes can't jeopardize the club's unity or operations. 
In cases where personal issues threaten to spill over into club business, senior members or the chapter's leadership often intervene to mediate and ensure resolution. While these rules might appear stringent, they stem from a place of practicality. The biker lifestyle, with its inherent risks and the looming specter of law enforcement, requires members to place utmost trust in one another. Personal disputes or complications can undermine this trust and compromise the club's operations. Relationships within the HAMC, as with any other aspect of the club, are governed by a set of unwritten rules rooted in respect, loyalty, and the overarching need to protect the club's integrity. These guidelines, while perhaps appearing complex to outsiders, are integral to the club's fabric, ensuring that personal relationships enhance, rather than detract from, the collective spirit of brotherhood that defines the Hell's Angels. Number 7. Separating Myth from reality. The Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, CHAMC, with its storied legacy and iconic status, has inevitably become the subject of numerous myths and misconceptions, particularly concerning its interactions with women. These tales, often fueled by media portrayals, pop culture, and occasional real-life incidents, have created an image that's sometimes at odds with the realities of the club. Here, we endeavor to sift through some of these myths and separate fact from fiction. While it's true that the property of Patch exists, it's a symbol of association and protection rather than ownership. Not every woman connected to a member wears this patch, and many who do wear it see it as a mark of pride and commitment. Moreover, the club recognizes and respects individual relationships, and the dynamics between a member and his partner are personal, varying from one relationship to another. This perception stems from the hyper-masculine image of the outlaw biker. However, while the club undoubtedly operates within a male-dominated sphere, it's reductive to label the entire organization as misogynistic. Many members have strong, respectful relationships with the women in their lives, be they partners, sisters, or daughters. The club's codes emphasize loyalty and respect, which extends to both genders. While it's accurate that women can't become full-patch Hells Angels members, this doesn't imply they lack influence or voice. Many old ladies and women closely associated with the club play pivotal roles, offering support, counsel, and sometimes even aiding in club operations. Their role, though not formalized, is integral to the club's ecosystem. Like any large organization, the HAMC has witnessed incidents where individuals have acted inappropriately or disrespectfully. However, it's an overgeneralization to suggest that all women connected to the club are at risk. Many women in the biker community are strong-willed, independent, and choose to be part of the lifestyle, embracing both its rewards and challenges. The image of the raucous biker party, often portrayed in movies or sensationalized in media reports, has contributed to this myth. While parties and gatherings are undoubtedly a part of club culture, it's essential to differentiate between consensual adult activities and exploitation. Many of these gatherings are private affairs, and what occurs is between consenting adults. Number 8. Controversies and Scandals Throughout its existence, the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, HAMC, has often found itself in the crosshairs of law enforcement, media, and public scrutiny. With its outlaw image, the club has naturally been associated with various controversies, some of which pertain to its interactions with women. While it's crucial to avoid painting the entire club with a broad brush based on the actions of a few, it's equally essential to acknowledge and discuss these incidents to provide a balanced view. Another significant controversy pertains to the portrayal of women as property. The property of Patch, though symbolic and part of club tradition, has drawn criticism and has been at the center of debates about objectification and consent. The fact that such a patch exists, regardless of its interpretation within the club, has been fodder for critics alleging misogyny and dominance. Yet it's worth noting that the HAMC is a vast organization with multiple chapters worldwide. While some members or chapters might have been embroiled in controversies, there are countless others who lead relatively quiet lives, sharing a love for biking and brotherhood. The club, like any large group, contains multitudes, and the actions of a few shouldn't define the many. Number 9. The Modern Era – Changes and Adaptations Time inevitably ushers in change, 
and even institutions as steeped in tradition as the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, HAMC, aren't immune to the transformations brought about by the march of decades. The modern era, characterized by rapid technological advancements, evolving societal norms, and the rise of global connectivity, has imparted its influence on the club, including in its dynamics and relationships with women. One of the most significant shifts has been the increased visibility of women within the biker community, both inside and outside of HAMC. The rise of social media has given a platform to many old ladies and associates of club members, allowing them to share their stories, experiences, and perspectives. This first-hand account often challenges preconceived notions, offering a more nuanced glimpse into the life and role of women within the club's sphere. Furthermore, the Hey AMC, like many organizations worldwide, is not insulated from global movements and discussions on gender equality, consent, and women's rights. These global dialogues have undoubtedly influenced individual members and chapters, leading to introspection and, in some cases, tangible changes in attitudes and behaviors. It's not uncommon now to find chapters actively participating in charitable events supporting women's causes or advocating against domestic violence. However, it's crucial to temper these observations with the understanding that the HAMC remains, at its core, an outlaw biker club with traditions and codes dating back decades. While there are shifts and adaptations, they occur within the framework of the club's foundational principles. In wrapping up this chapter, it's evident that the modern era has brought about subtle yet significant changes in the HAMC's dynamics, especially concerning its interactions and relationships with women. While the club holds firm to its traditions and roots, it's also a living entity, evolving and adapting to the world around it, proving once again its resilience and ability to navigate the complexities of time. Number 10. Voices from Inside. Accounts of Women Affiliated with HAMC. While much has been written and said about the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, HAMC, from the perspective of outsiders, it's the voices from within, particularly those of women affiliated with the club, that provide the most authentic and revealing insights. These accounts shed light on the myriad experiences, feelings, and realities of women who have chosen to associate with HAMC members. Samantha, who was involved with a Hell's Angel for over a decade, once remarked, Being with him taught me the true meaning of loyalty. The club was his family, and in being with him, I became a part of that family too. It wasn't always easy, but the bonds I forged with the women and men in the club were some of the strongest in my life. Another account comes from Lisa, whose father was a long-standing member of the HAMC. Growing up around the club, she recollects, People always assume the worst when they hear about my upbringing. But in reality, it was about barbecues, long rides, and a community that stood by each other no matter what. Yes, there were rough patches, but isn't that true for every family? The role of an old lady is often misunderstood or misconceived by those on the outside. Michelle, who wore the property of Patch with pride, said, For outsiders, the patch might seem demeaning, but for me it symbolized protection pride, and a deep bond with my man. It was about love and mutual respect. The realm of Hell's Angels isn't just about brotherhood. It's also about sisterhood. Many women form close-knit bonds, offering each other support and camaraderie. Jane, who was married to a member for years, shared, The other women became my sisters. We laughed together, cried together, and had each other's backs. The world often saw us as mere biker chicks. But we were so much more. But, like any community, the HAMC isn't without its challenges. Emma, who distanced herself from the club after a few years, spoke of her struggles. There were times when I felt overshadowed, lost amidst the roar of the bikes in the male-dominated world. It took time, but I found my voice and my place. These accounts, though just a fraction of the myriad stories that lie within the world of Hey MC, offer a glimpse into the complexities and nuances of being a woman in close association with the club. They underscore the importance of looking beyond stereotypes, understanding that every old lady or affiliate has her unique tale, filled with its own trials, tribulations, joys, and moments of clarity. The voices from inside, in all their diversity and authenticity, are testament to the rich tapestry of experiences that define the world of the Hell's Angels.